Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador, and happy St. Patrick's Day. This doesn't look green, but it's officially green, so no pinching going on on this end. <laughs> but today, speaking of pinching, we're going to be swinging. Check this out. Jerry is going to be showing us not only how to do that project, he's going to show us how to do some really cool things on embroidery and sewing on things that you might have never thought of doing before. So if you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. I'm going to go grab Jerry. We'll be right back. Jerry, Jerry, how are you? No, gosh, you think it would be St. Patrick's Day or something. What? <laughs> Happy St. Patty's Day. What? What? You definitely get an A+. Plus. I, I had to run around looking for a green shirt, and it kind of looks blue in the screen. But it's officially green, but you are definitely green. Well, you know, I feel like the Green Hornet, the superhero, but I don't know that I'm a superhero. But <laughs> here, we'll just sort of exit away from this and... Get back to my real self here. Oh, I feel more like me every day there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Everybody's saying hi to you. So if you don't know Jerry, Jerry is a brother educator. Jerry, you've been with brother how many years? I mean, well, you've been sewing forever, but how many years yeah. have you been with brother? Oh, gosh. I want to say going on five, maybe, I think. I think, yeah, going on five. Yeah. I actually think it's longer. It could I be. I you way longer than that. <laughs> it could be. So, Jerry, you do so many awesome things, and we've watched, if, if I'm just saying, if you're new to this party, by the way, Jerry has a lot of episodes that you can go back and watch, and a lot of bling. We always called it the bling with the metallic thread. Your quilts are fantastic, but today, we're doing the Quilt of Fashion Challenge, and you blew me away. I'm just going to bring up your uh, finished project here. Ooh. Can you all see this? I was, this was not what I was expecting to show up in my email box. <laughs> well, they told us to get out of the box. So as you know, I'm very out of the box, especially with uh, the fabrics that I use. I, you know, my quilts have upholstery fabric and satins and lames and all these weird kind of fabrics that are normally used for fashion. Um, but when they said go out of the box, I can go way out of the box. And I think that's pretty evident with this project. <laughs> I think it's awesome. So when I was reading your description, you're talking about sewing on things that I have never thought of sewing or embroidering on. Well, you know, a, a lot of us, a lot of you folks have probably seen a lot of us educators at events. And when we've talked to you about different machines, we've said, you know, you can, you can stitch on wood, you know, real thin woods and ribbons and things like that. But have you ever actually seen us do it? Now, in all fairness, it's tough to carry a little piece of wood around um, without it breaking in luggage. But um, I want to show you all those things. I'm going to show you exactly how you can embroider on wood and ribbon um, and how to do it pretty easily. I think that's fantastic. I think I have. Uh, let me just bring up in case anybody missed Tuesday's show where Cindy Hogan showed the quilt block. Now, by the way, everyone saw the quilt block and everyone's like, what do we do? The instructions were to think outside the box. You can use any colors, but you have to use this quilt block as a base. Right. Yeah, it was, it was, I love challenges like that. Um, a lot of my quilts, well, I do a lot of competition quilts. And for me, it's not a competition with everybody else. It's a competition for myself to challenge myself. So if you give me some kind of challenge, I'm all about it. I'm, I'm going to run with it. And I'm just going to try to find things that, that challenge me personally. So when I saw this block, it's, it was one of those projects where I knew exactly what I was going to do and I knew exactly how I was going to put it together. Um, especially when they said, get out of the box, I went, okay. <laughs> so. I'm definitely with that. Okay. So I can't find the photo right now. It was right here. And I think when I brought up the, the, um, yeah, it disappeared. I'll find it. It doesn't matter because this is what you're going to be working on now. So this, if you remember the block that Cindy put together, there's the block. I'll find it as you go, but why don't we get started and I'll find the block in the meantime. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be more than, I have been looking forward to this show for so long because like I said, you know, we talk about these things that we can do, but rarely do see someone do it. So um, these, this is, I'm very excited for all of you to see this. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun uh, and it's going to be a lot easier than you may think. 
I think this is fantastic. So let's get started. So let's I'm going to go, uh, let's get started. So, okay. So we're going to be, I'm going to start with the ribbon today. So I'm going to start with uh, embroidering on ribbon. Um, just to let you know, I'm pretty old school with things. I try to keep things as, as basic and simple as possible. My way is a way. It's not the way. I don't claim it to be the way. Um, I like to keep it simple because if something goes wrong or, or, something's not working, I want to know exactly how to fix it quickly. I don't I don't have a lot of time, you know, I'm an educator, I'm on the road, so I don't have a whole lot of time to spend a whole day trying to fix a problem. So if something's going wrong, or I got to fix something, I'm going to do it quick and easy and fast. So that's why I keep things really simple. Um, <laughs> even when I'm designing quilts, man, I'm using erasers, pencils, and graph paper and rulers. I'm very old school that way. So, um, because I want to be able to fix something quickly. So let's get started. I'm so excited. I can't wait to get started with this. Okay. Okay. So we're guess going... what? As you're oh, switching. There it is. Yep. Here there it, it is. is. I knew it was right there. This was the original block. Yeah. This is just one version of it. Um, so you can see it's a very simple block, uh, different colors than Jerry's, but it's definitely yeah. different. So yeah. there you go. All right. Back awesome. to you, Jerry. All right. So I'm going to switch over to my other camera here uh, where I'm in front of my machine. And the reason why is I want to kind of show you what's going to be going on, what we're going to use, and how it's going to get used. So I'm going to scoot over to my machine here. And like um, like Angela said, uh, this is this is the block that we started with. So this was the file that we got. And they said, here it is. Do whatever you want. And I went, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> um, you can see it's been well loved. And I'll show you why that it's separating like this. Um, it's it was this is basically the framework for something else. So like Angela showed, this is the finished product. So I'm going to uh, it's a tennis racket, and I'm just going to kind of slowly slowly go through it with you. So there's a little little bow at the top to mimic the bow here. Um, this is Minnie playing tennis with herself, oh and God. here's the racket. It's got little blingies on there. It's got some decorative threads, and then all the way at the bottom. I wanted to use uh, decorative stitching on ribbon to mimic the handle. So I'm going to show you how I did all this. So I'm going to start Sorry, with- that stitching. I just did that on my jeans and, and I like it better on the ribbon. I think it looks oh, awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, or you could do it on the ribbon and then applique it on your jeans and on you could use jeans. whatever color combination you want. So yeah, so that's what I started with here. So this is the original tennis racket. Now the tennis racket itself came from a thrift shop. It was only a couple dollars. Um, and, but it makes, you know, if you have someone in your family, that's of course, of course you can change the colors however you want. Um, mine happens to be a little more on the feminine side. If you want it more masculine, of course you would use, uh, more masculine colors, um, or whatever color you want really. But wouldn't this be awesome for somebody who is a tennis player, maybe daughter, granddaughter, son, grandson, uh, do something like this to decorate their their room, or if they go to college, it'd be a great college gift to decorate their dorm if they're going on the tennis oh, team. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I in some ways people ask, well, where does this stuff come from? I have no idea. It's just, it's you know, we have all these tools in our toolbox in our head. We just have to get into our head and pull them out and just relax. It's all there. Everything you've ever learned over the years is all there. You just have to relax and let it come out. And so I, I just kind of knew immediately what I wanted to do. So again, back to the block. Here's the original. And what I did with it is I used it as the background for my my uh, my racket. Now, this is wood. You can hear that. That's that's wood. So I've embroidered on wood. And what I wanted to do is make kind of a sort of an abstract tennis court. So we have uh, upper mini who's playing on her side. And we have lower mini who's playing on her side. And I wanted this to be kind of the yellow to be kind of sort of mimic in an abstract way, the net. So they're kind of playing back and forth with each other. Now, I will say that all of these designs came from iBroidery.com. So if those of you who are our brother machine owners and you don't know about iBroidery.com, uh, I suggest that you go there. It's a brother exclusive embroidery site. And um, it is great for uh, brother machine owners. You just input your machine imp information and it will tell you which designs are compatible. Now there's more Disney, there's Marvel, but there's also like home deck, freestanding lace, uh, things like that. So it's not just Disney, but if you want even more Disney and Marvel and all that stuff, go to iBroidery.com. And that's where these designs came from. So let me get started on the ribbon. So just to refresh your memory, 
uh, again, I did a little decorative ribbon here. And then I also did the decorative ribbon for the handle. And then I used a little bit of decorative thread to wrap the top to kind of finish that off. Now, the leather handle that the racket came with is still under there. So all I did is I spray basted uh, the handle and then wrapped the ribbon around so that it glued. So um, that's, I mean, that's about as simple as I can get it. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm old school, so uh, I just keep things very simple. So let me show you how I did the ribbon. Now, I'm going to use a frame that you may or may not be familiar with, and this is the Brother border frame. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is the border frame. Um, it's about five by seven-ish, uh, and it's wonderful if you're going to do like the edging of a sheet or uh, if you have long strips of something. Um, and so for the ribbon, it's perfect. So all I'm going to do is slide it into my machine. And get it ready. Your machine should recognize this. Now, I do want to say that what we're doing today doesn't... Now, I'm using a Luminaire uh, XP1 that's been upgraded. However, you can do this on other machines as well. So you just have to choose um, a design that's going to work for your size hoop. You're not... This is not just a Luminaire project. So um, this also can be done on other machines. So... Um, Let's go ahead and get started. So all I'm going to do now, one thing about this frame, which you'll notice is uh, the two most important components are this plastic piece here and this little gray plastic button here. So in order to engage this hoop, now the hoop has like Velcro and rubber on it. So if you're looking to really have something hooped well and not move, this is great. So all you do is you take this little plastic piece and you're going to press it down until it snaps. And you'll do that on both sides. Um, you'll see, uh, you can't see on my machine, but it's exactly the same on the other side. I'm going to, you'll snap down both pieces and then to release it, you just push this little gray button and it snaps right up. So if you, uh, this is absolutely great for ribbon. So all you're going to need, um, again, there's different ways to do this, but this is just my way. So I'm just going to take, this is a piece of tearaway stabilizer, just a, just kind of a light to medium weight tearaway stabilizer. Place that right in my hoop, just slides right in. And I know you can't see it, but just like our other brother hoops, there are markings in this, marking the center points. Uh, they're little like, um, like knockouts of plastic. So they're little like arrows almost, uh, little, little points where we can center everything. Now I'm going to be using the one on the end here and the one on the opposite end back here. And all I'm going to do is lay my ribbon in and I'm going to make it so that one edge of the ribbon is right on my right on the edge. And then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. And excuse my arm. I'm going to have to reach in here and snap that down. These are now, it is now tightly in here. But just to make it a little more secure, I'm just going to take a little piece of tape and just do the edges. Now, keeping in mind what your design is going to be for your ribbon, you don't want to put your tape like in the middle of the ribbon. I'm just going to put it right on the ends. Just to, hey, Gary, just, yes, ma'am. One more time. What is the name of that hoop again? It's the it's the brother border frame. Border frame. The, yep, that's been border. around for a while. It has. Yeah, it has. Um, and and what's funny is not a lot of people know about it. <laughs> right. I, I talk to people about it, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't even know we had that." Well, yep, we sure do. We do, and that, so I know a lot of you here might not have the Luminaire, but maybe you have one, a Dream Machine or something like that. Guess yeah. what? Hoop will work with it. It works. It works. Again, it's great for you if you want to do the edge of something and you're doing long strips of it. Just like, I mean, so it's perfect for this ribbon. So there, I mean, that's as simple as it gets. Just just place your stabilizer in, um, put your ribbon where you want it, put, put a little bit of tape just to make sure everything stays nice and pretty, and you're ready to go. So I'm going to go over to my screen because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So Angela, if you want to, I'm going to go over to my other camera. All righty. I'll bring your tennis racket just so you, they All can right. see the before again. Some people were asking, hey, let me see that. <laughs> and where did the design come from? Ibroidery.com. Ibroidery.com. And uh, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm, I'm not a video studio here. So if I switch back and forth to cameras, it goes to black really quick. So we're just going to make it so that you all can, can see it a little <laughs> we have, better. We have little hints for each other. So you can see it a little better. Yeah. 
So, okay, so I'm gonna do this full screen. Let me uh, let me do another quick little click so that it, it uh, focuses for you. Now I am using, uh, I got bumped, there we go. I'm using my, can you see my cursor on the screen? I'm using a mouse for this. Now remember, uh, with a lot of our machines, we can plug in a mouse. Um, and just in case you, you all are gonna ask, this is just, you wanna find the cheapest mouse that you can. And it, it should be wired. I've heard people say that they can, they found wireless ones that work, but I find that the 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 corded mouse, the, one, the mouse with the cord on it works really well. Um, and it's cheap. I mean, just less than $10, that's all you want. Don't buy anything real fancy, but you can plug it in. And I like it, especially like when I'm working in my design center down here. Um, it comes in really handy when you're trying to do little, little like tedious, picky stuff. So let's go into um, let's go into embroidery, and I am going to look for category five, which is right down here. I'll circle it with my cursor. This is where all the decorative stitches are. Now we have all these decorative stitches on the sewing side, but we also have them on the embroidery side. So I'm going to choose. Now, for those of you who may not know, if you see, I'm going to circle this with my cursor. This is an arrow here that we can expand so we can see things just a little better. So in my case, um, I don't have to, I could grab this and scroll down and go through all the designs as I want to. Look at how many there are. I mean, that's just amazing. And again, this is on the embroidery side. So if you didn't want to switch over to the sewing side, these are all in embroidery. So I'm going to choose uh, number six because that's right here. That's the one that I, I use, 006. And I'm going to set that, and there it is, right on my screen. Now, um, the issue is I need to, you know what, I'm going to scoot this over because it's trying to focus on my needle, and I want it to focus on the screen. There, we go, a little better. Okay, so now what I want to do, um, there's my basic, uh, basic design. Now, if you notice this rectangle here on my screen, I went into my settings, and I chose a five by seven screen because that's the close or five by seven hoop because that's the closest representation to the border frame that I have, the border hoop that I have. And what that tells me is now I have um, a, a kind of a, a wall or a framework. I know exactly how many designs I can put in there before I'm out of the hoop and my machine yells at me because <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> There's too, I've gone outside the, the frame. So that's a tip. If you are working with a four by four design and you're working with a four by four hoop, go into your settings menu and choose a hoop that is representative of your of your uh, frame, uh, the hoop that you're using. Now here I've chosen the five by seven. Um, and that way you'll get that on your screen so you can see exactly the parameters you have to work in. Now, I want to add designs to this. So let's go up here into edit in the upper right hand corner. And I'm going to scroll all the way down here to this little icon here, which some of you have on your machines and you don't know what that is. <laughs> this is the border feature. So again, we're using the border frame. So this is going to work perfectly. So I'm going to choose that. And that opens up a menu where you can now add designs to the left, to the right, up, down, you can add to this however you like. Now, in my case, I want to keep it in a straight line. So I want to add like a couple to the top. So I'm going to come up here to this one with, that has a little plus sign and boop, boop. I can just keep adding as much as I want. I'm going to add, whoop, I'm going to add one to the bottom. And now I'm going to use my arrows to bring that design into, uh, into my frame. So you can see just that easily, I have now added designs to the upper and lower. So, I mean, I could have uh, I could have certainly like used the duplicating icon and duplicated this design, but then I'd have to go and try to really line them up, uh, bring the magnification up to like 400%, try to get the ends all even. This does it for you, and it's so easy and fast. So just let the machine do the work for you. So we're going to say, okay. And now I'm into embroidery. And really, folks, this takes longer for me to explain than it does for you to do it. So let me refocus again just to make sure we're all playing pretty. It's trying to focus on my, my frame. So um, <laughs> sorry about that. Now I'm going to use the projector. Now I could scan this. Absolutely. I could scan this um, and just like we normally can and then use my screen to place it. 
but I want to, I want even more accuracy because I want this exactly in the middle uh, of my ribbon and I want to see it and audition it. So I'm going to choose the projector. Now this will only take a second and I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my other camera here. Angela, right. so while he's switching that, I'll bring the tennis racket back up. And by the way, I can see, and so can Jerry, all of your questions that come up. So don't worry, we will break for those here shortly. Or just ask me. You know, I, I was a, I was a musician for many years, and if you've ever seen the Blues Brothers, uh, that, that, <laughs> you could multitask with yeah, no problem. That scene where they go on stage and they get stuff thrown at them because the, they weren't the band that everybody was expecting. <laughs> I've been in bands like that. So if you if you break in and you have a question, it's not going to throw me off at all. Trust me. Oh, perfect. So. <laughs> a lot of people asking if this hoop will work with their machine. So what I'm going to ask you, it will work on many machines. So mm -hmm. and you have to get it from your brother dealer. So why? Why don't you just call your brother dealer, tell them what machine you have, and they'll first off tell you if they have the hoop, when they can get the hoop, and if it works with your machine. That's my right. suggestion. Yeah, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to say, yes, it works, and then you buy it and it doesn't work. <laughs> so, all right, so I have my projector on. I know this is, a, it, this is going to get a little squirrely with trying to see, because cameras in our projector don't really work too well. Um, you'll get that little ribbon. I think you're seeing that little rainbow effect, but I'll, we'll do the best that we can here. So... All right, what I'm going to do is I need to, the projector is showing that my design is um, off my ribbon. So I need to make it so it's on my ribbon. Oh, I just had it. There it is. It's now in the center. So at the top, you can probably see it. Um, again, it could be the lighting. I'm not sure. Here, let me turn this off. Maybe we that will it. help. You can see it okay? Okay. Yeah, we All can right. see it pretty good. If you look really close, I always say that the rainbow does not come with the machine. <laughs> yeah. A, a visual effect. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go into uh, my settings, and I'm going to turn off my light. And let's see if that might help. So doo -doo -doo, give me just a second here. I'm going to turn my light off. We love seeing we'll all the see settings. see if you light. can. And i got to go back and turn my projector on. Oh, I think It'll this is going to be better. Just take a second. We'll see here. That's a little bright. That's actually worse. <laughs> um, it's just a little bright. That's why. Um, so anyway, what I've done is it's projecting the stitches down onto my ribbon. And uh, now I can just adjust that ribbon left or right as I need to or up or down. Uh, and I'm ready to go. So I can take the projector uh, on my screen and I can move that so I can see exactly um, where the ribbon is. Um, again, I apologize that it's not as clear, but the cameras get a little squirrely with these things. So I know that it's right in the center. So once I have that, I'm ready to embroider. So all I have to do is do my... Uh, da -da -da. I'm not sure why I'm not. It says key cannot be used at this time. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, I can tell you why, Jerry, because we're live. Anything that... That's why. So That's crazy. exactly why. All right, let me get out of here. And let's go ahead. Oh, now it's green. I think it's because my projector was on. So let me go ahead and just start it. And we'll get that all started. Now, the nice thing about doing this on the embroidery side is, um, you know, I hear a lot at events. Is there any way, <clears throat> excuse me, is there any way that when I'm doing decorative stitching, um, I can keep everything centered because everything is kind of moving around, right? And how do I how, how do I get this to work better? Well, if you noticed, a lot of those, a tremendous amount of those decorative stitches are on the embroidery side. So let your embroidery machine do it, and that way you don't. All you have to do is line it up with your projector and your scanner, and everything will. You won't have to worry about anything getting out of line or moving on you, um, like it would on the sewing side. So try it on the embroidery side and see how that goes. Now, see again, what's great about the border function is it connects everything. So all of my designs have been connected, so I'm not getting any stopping and starting. It's slowing down when it gets to the next design, but then it continues. So if you were trying to do this manually on the sewing side, you'd have to keep you know, readjusting. And if you had scanned it in and maybe done like a, a duplication and tried to line it all up, your machine might stop after every design. Well, now I can just keep going. Well, that saves a lot of time. So this is going to, I think we're done with this part of the design. And I'm going to show you why this hoop is so magical. So there it is. You can see all my stitching here. And so now I'm going, I'm going to use this little plastic. Remember this little button here? 
I'm going to use it on this side to unhook it. I'm going to use it on the other side. I'm sorry for my Godzilla arm here. Unsnap it. And now all I have to do is slide. Slide it all the way down till I get to the next section. And I'm going to slide. Um, I won't do it right now because I don't want to take up too much time. But what I would do is slide just another piece of uh, tearaway under here and just overlap them here. Maybe put a little piece of tape to hold the stabilizers together. But don't worry about it doubling up because you're going to remove it anyway, right? You're going to remove it on the back anyway. So just right. slide it up, put in another piece of stabilizer under here, adjust your ribbon. Remember, we're going to use the markings that are on the hoop to center everything. Clamp it down and off you go. Get your projector, uh, get the next section lined up and off you go. And really, you do this a couple times and it's going to go so fast. You won't believe how much ribbon you can do. So let me go ahead and, and bring this up. And so there's our ribbon with the decorative wow. stitching on it. I mean, that's simple. It's not hard. <laughs> but Jerry, I, I cannot believe that's a stitch you picked because I love this. You just did that with embroidery. I did this exact same stitch with sewing. See? I like your embroidery better. I can put my pockets in there and just keep embroidering away. Exactly. Yeah. And nothing's going to move around because, you know, like I said, a lot of people say, well, how do I how do I do it so that, it you know, the fabric doesn't keep moving around? I don't know how to center my stitches. We'll try mm -hmm. it on the embroidery side. Just hoop up whatever it is you're going to do your decorative stitching on and let the machine do the work for you. Love it. So, yeah, it's it's awesome. Well, you know, I'm not surprised that you picked that because great, great minds think alike, you know? <laughs> Especially if we're going to both be on St. Patrick's Day. We're definitely going to have the same mind. You bet. Well, and you're like a friend of mine used to say, great minds think alike and so do ours. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yes. I mean, I mean, folks, it's that simple to embroider on ribbon. And I like, again, I like this. Yes, you can do it with a regular hoop. But remember, you're going to have to keep adjusting that hoop up and down and things may get out of proportion. What's nice, or they might slide out of the way. What's nice about this is it clamps it down instead of you having to hoop and rehoop. So if you want to adjust, just pop that button, move it around. But once, you know, slowly you put it down and you've got everything aligned in the hoop, just kind of push down and everything stays in place. So and I love this hoop. You didn't have to take the hoop off. You didn't right. have like, the part that really gets people really, <laughs> you know, baffled when they're trying to do something continuously. That yeah. was really, really easy to do. And, and that's a good point. If you notice, I didn't have to take the hoop off. All I did was slide it on down. So, I mean, it's great. <clears throat> it's great for that. So, okay. Now we're done with that. So we're going to go on to the main part of this, the main, um, the main event, so to speak. <laughs> this is what everyone's going to want to see. So let me show you what it is that I'm using. I have some little samples here. So I'm going to yeah. pull these up now. What I'm using is a very thin piece of basswood or plywood. These you can get in a craft store. You can get them online. Ooh, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> there we go. It's it just basswood. Yeah, this is basswood. And here, let me get this out of the way because it's trying to focus. I'll put it down here, make it easier. There, it's, perfect. If you see it, it's very thin. It's very, very thin. This is three thirty seconds of an inch. I'll say that again because I know people are going to write that down. Three thirty seconds of an inch. You don't want to go any thicker um, because it may not work, and you don't want to go any thinner because it could it could crack and sh and sh and shear off. But you you're perfectly great with this. This is basswood. Um, you could also use balsa wood. Don't use something like a mahogany because <laughs> it's just too thick, um, and your machine will not like it, and you'll probably have to go to your technician to fix it and you'll cry. And we don't want that. There's no crying and sewing. So <laughs> we don't want you crying. So just use three thirty seconds and it works beautifully. Um, and right now, a lot of your brains are going wood. We're going to embroider on wood. Don't panic. It's fine. So I'm there's sitting here going, oh my gosh. Oh yep. my gosh. And I yep. see Michelle said, did he say wood? Like yep. as in W-O-O-D? Yes, he did. I'm I dying sure... to see this. Yep. This is real wood, folks. This is this is not <laughs> a, a plastic or a, or a fabric. This is real wood. So all I did is I took my block and I placed it just very lightly on my uh, on my wood and I taped that down. And then I used, this is a point turner, but I used it as an embossing tool. And all I did is I just embossed each of the lines. That's why this is separated here. So I embossed each of the lines so that what I got on the wood was a, an impression because I didn't want a pencil. I didn't want to use a marking tool because I didn't know if the paint would cover it. 
So I wanted to just emboss the design into the wood. So that's what I did. And that gave me lines. So here's another sample. Now this wood comes in all different shapes and sizes. Um, here's another little piece you could do. Wouldn't this be great for like coasters or something like that? Yes, Jerry's going to use wood on the machine. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> I see the comments. Everybody's sitting here like this. Kelly goes, it's not true. There's always crying in a sewing room. But <laughs> I know. Well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And not, not, not if you not if you prep correctly. <laughs> Make sure you prep as much as you can. <laughs> uh, and that should alleviate some of the tears. So um, this would be a great coaster or something like that. I did a design once where um, and it was a gift. Uh, I did uh I stained the wood first and finished it. And then put that in my embroidery hoop and embroidered on it and used it as the top of a jewelry box. So you can use this on top of something else or glue it to something else if you wish. So again, you're just limited by your imagination. So then once I had that embossed, and this is just another little sample piece that I did. This is a beige tone. Um, and if you notice, it's got glitter on it because, well, I'm Jerry. And that's what Jerry does is the sparkles. There we go. Now my camera focuses. So um, you can do that as well. This is a, a glitter glue or I'm sorry, glitter paint, glitter paint. And I just painted the design. Now I, for paint, all I'm using is very inexpensive craft paint that you can get at any craft store, any big box store. Um, just you probably have a bunch of bottles laying around. Nothing fancy. Remember, I'm basic and old school. So. I just wanted to keep things simple. So that's just basic craft paint. You may have to do a couple uh, a couple layers of paint. That's fine. The, the wood is fine. Um, if you notice, it doesn't warp as much, but it won't matter because you're going to glue this to the tennis racket anyway. So, um, you know, you just paint your design on and decorate it as much as you want. And then you're going to place it in your hoop. Now, I'm going to move some things out of the way here, and I'm going to show you what I used and the hoop that I used. Now, the sheet that I used was an eight by 12 sheet uh, and I'm sorry. Yeah, eight by 12. And guess what hoop I used? The eight by 12 hoop and it worked perfectly. So what I have here, I'm gonna put my hoop in. And what I have is a layer of, uh, go under here, a layer of that lightweight stabilizer, the same one I used for the ribbon. And I hooped up sticky back stabilizer. Now, those of you who are not familiar with Sticky Back, it's a wonderful product for when you're floating things that can't be hooped, such as uh, velvet will get hoop burn if you try to hoop it. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, towels are great for that. And this project is perfect. So if you're just floating something in the hoop, Sticky Back is great because the underside, you can probably hear that, is very sticky. So what I... Harry, question yeah. for you. I got two questions for you, actually. Yes. One from the peanut gallery and one from me. <laughs> no, I'm not available. I'm taken. I'm sorry, ladies. I'm taken. So, <laughs> Okay. So why do you have two stabilizers in there? Okay. That's a great question. First off, you could use just the sticky back. But I, I think in my experimenting that the extra layer of lightweight stabilizer just gives the stitches a little more support um, and it makes it a little bit cleaner back once you tear everything away. Now it won't really matter because you're going to cover the back anyway. Um, but I just think that it supports the stitches better and it keeps everything kind of playing nicely together. So okay, that's why. That's, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That was my question. Now everybody's asking, yeah. what, could you say that again? What needle, what mm -hmm. size needle? And yep. just a little bit more about the needle. Yeah, I was I was just getting to that. So great, great time to ask that. Um, this is, just, believe it or not, this is just a regular 7511 embroidery needle. Um, and the reason why is I want to keep the holes as small as possible. Um, if you go up to something much larger, what's going to happen, like up to a 90 or so, what could happen is you're piercing the wood and the wood, it's just going to create a cutout, basically. Instead of keeping your design on the wood, it's going to actually cut it out. So with the smaller needle, it creates smaller holes. So the wood in between those fine holes is still wood. So it's going to keep everything together and it's not going to, it's not going to score the wood. So as you can see around each design, it's, you, you can't even really see the holes <laughs> and it didn't cut out the design. It really close. Yeah. I don't see one hole. So 75, yeah. Yeah. 11. Yeah. On and it works well. Now I will say this, um, really pay attention to, now, this is one where you really can't walk away. <laughs> you really do want to stick close because 
Uh, what could happen is your needle starts to get dull depending on the wood and the manufacturer that you're using. Um, mm -hmm. So you just, you know, if your needle starts looking like it's it's working too hard, change your needle. Needles are cheap, folks. It, don't be afraid to change your needle. Change to a new needle. So okay. um, <laughs> he can't resist himself. That ain't that. Well, I'm thinking I always change needles like every two pairs of jeans, maybe every pair, depending on how, you know, thick the denim was. I'm thinking with this project, you change yeah. a needle every project probably i mean oh yeah oh yeah yeah if you if you really want to feel secure there are three total designs in this um change your needle after each design once you're finished change your needle i didn't quite frankly i i did the same needle for all three and it was fine now after i was done i noticed toward the end of the third design things are getting a little <laughs> harder to do so i changed my needle and everything was fine um also what you may notice with working with wood is your uh, thread might shred a little bit more, maybe switch to a top stitch needle. Um, but I like the, I have not had any problems with the embroidery needle. And that may also be a signal that you need to change your needle. Um, Cause it, it shouldn't shred unless your, your needle is getting dull. So, okay. all right. Um, anything Perfect. else? Uh, nope. Everybody's just saying, so I'm like, is that, I thought that was paint on the wood, yeah. not fabric. Uh, yep. They're like, what is this? They're like, they're dying to see this. This is like, what is this sorcery that you're talking about? I know. <laughs> what is this magic that you speak? So, again, I'll just put this up here. This is painted on the wood. So, my design was embossed into the wood using just a point turner, or you could use, I didn't use an X Acto knife because I didn't want to risk cutting the wood, cutting all the way through. So, I just wanted to emboss on the top. Um, and again, I didn't want to have a pencil marking. So, I just embossed the design into the wood with a point turner. Um, and and that was it. And then I just used, like, again, just a regular cheapo, inexpensive acrylic paint, nothing fancy. Um, even if you have house paint laying around that you have and, and you want to match it to your house, you could use that as well, just thin layers of that. So, again, just really simple, really basic. And then I covered it with a layer of glitter paint. So, just a clear glitter paint to give it some shine. Um, I didn't do that on the finished project because I thought that the glitter might take away from the design. So I didn't do that. So this is why I always, I'm always telling people test, 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 test everything, test, you know, you get a whole package of these, so you could test away. So um, I painted a couple different colors, finally landed on the one that I liked. Uh, and that's what, that's what it became. So, all right, let's keep going here. So in my hoop, I've got my sticky back. Now you'll notice that this has been uh, torn away. And the reason why is you're going to take a pin and you're going to score the stabilizer. I'm not cutting through the stabilizer. I'm just kind of dragging the pin across and scoring it. And what I'm doing is I'm creating lines all the way around the hoop. Um, then you're going to pick at very carefully pick at the at the center center points and peel them back. And so all you're going to do is just peel this back and just peel that right off. And you can see how easy this does. Just like that, it just peels right off. Now you want to be careful. Um, once the sticky is exposed, you don't want to keep touching it because you, you do want the, the sticky to, uh, to be as crisp as possible. And I'm going to remove this little one right here. Didn't want to play well with, with anyone else. So I'm going to grab it up here. <laughs> Notice, not hard, not hard at all. Just peel Marilyn's it right like, off. I thought he was kidding. No, he's not kidding. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to sew on wood. All right, so here we go. Let's grab uh, a piece of our wood. And what we're going to do is I'm going to, you choose a side that you like. Some may, like this side is pretty grainy. The other side is not so much. So it doesn't matter if you're going to paint it because it's going to be covered anyway. So it doesn't matter. So, um, but if you're if you're going to expose the wood and keep it, you know, exposed and natural, then choose a side that's good for you. Now you're just going to lay it in, and you're going to give it a little press. That wood is now going to be stuck down, and just for a little bit more security, um, I mean, it's fine. I've done it with or without tape, but I know some people are tapers. Um, I tend to be a taper as well, uh, and a pinner. So just add ER to any sewing word and it's it's legal. It works. So, okay. Hey, Lori, I'm glad you're finally catching a live show. You you picked a good one to this catch. Is a, this is a good <laughs> one because a lot of people 
a lot of people don't know, you know, we, we say that we, we say that we can do this, but a lot, you don't see it a lot. So, okay. So that's, that's good. Uh, just for a sample. Now, what I'm going to do first, remember, test, test, test. I'm going to run a sample of this first because I want to make sure my threads are going to work well. My design is going to work well. And I want to focus on any issues I might have. So I'm going to do this as a test. So remember, you get a whole package of these when you when you buy them. So don't worry about um, uh, wasting anything because once you're done with your test, if all goes well, you now have another design that you can use for something else. So just to show what I'm talking about, here is uh, a test that I did on just the basic wood, just to see everything was playing well, everything worked out, and it did. It went just fine. I had no Look problems. I mean. Yeah. You don't even notice on the tenor, tennis racket. I mean, like holding that up like that. Oh, my gosh. I mean, yeah. everyone that's watching, I know if you're on YouTube, you have to click the like button. But if you're on Facebook, you have got to give Jerry the love on this one because <laughs> this is going to be so cool. I cannot believe that's embroidered. I'm still in shock yep. here. Yep. And I'll, just to prove it on the back, there is my there is my stabilizer and there's the back of it. So wow. there it is. This is all embroidered on wood. So now I'm um, I'm going to go over to let me get out of here. I'm going to go back to my screen, <laughs> Angela. Mind. So if you want to, I know, I know. Everyone's like, <laughs> this is not going to end well. All right, it Even will. It trust they're me. all giving you the love emoji, and it's going <laughs> to go really well. So let me go back to my screen because I want to show you what we're going to be doing here. All right, so let me grab uh, let me grab my my. Uh, my mouse and I'm going to get out of here. And I already have, um, I'm going to go into my pocket, my memory pocket. Yes, it's ball. It's uh, this is bass wood, but you could use uh, balsa wood as well. As long as it's some, a soft wood, it needs to be very soft. So as you can see here in my memory, I already have the design pulled up, um, but I also have the three separate components that I played with to create my original design. So of course that's the beauty of this machine. So now you see that I have my five by seven. So I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to choose a different frame size. I have an eight by 10. So I'm going to go look for eight by 10. I must have passed it. Okay. So I'm going to go with uh, 10 to 5 eighths by 16. That'll work. All right. So we're ready to go. So now the whole thing is in play. My whole screen is in play. And what I'm going to do is just choose Embroider. <clears throat> now, I'm going to point this out, too, because I'm going to get into this a little bit. This is an applique design. The first thing it's going to stitch out. And if you look on the right side, you can see all of the applique steps. I'm going to skip those. I don't want this to be an applique. I just wanted the design. So here's another tip. Don't look at your designs as just one thing. Split them apart. Try to look at them in different ways. Uh, this was an applique, didn't want the applique, so I just skipped those steps and started right on the design. And I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to go to embroidery. And <clears throat> I'm actually ready to start stitching. Now, you can notice it's going to do the tennis part first. Uh, I have a yellow in there, but that's okay. It's fine. You can choose whatever colors you want. Here's all my steps on the right side. Now, another thing, here's an important step. Do not skip this step. You're going to go into your speed. Mine's set at 800. Don't do that. <laughs> set it at 350 or 400. Um, I was able to get away with 400. Start at 350 because I'm doing a test. And my tension is going to go down to a 2 because I, I don't want that thread to be too tight because uh, you, know, you need to allot for that layer of wood. So, and, and again, it's, it, I'm using a basswood. You can use balsa wood, um, three thirty seconds of an inch thick. All right, so we're ready to go. Now, here's where you're gonna come over to your machine and you're, I'm gonna just scoot this over real quick and we're ready to go. And you are gonna touch this and you're gonna start shaking. Your hand is, <laughs> your, your brain is going to say, this is going to end in disaster. Really? I'm going to bust my machine. It's going to break. Trust me, it will not. So I'm going to switch my camera over to my... Ah, don't take us away. Don't no, take no, us away. No, no, I'm going to get you closer. <laughs> I'm going to get you closer. Oh, We're going to go here. I'm like sweating, so, Jerry. 
Sorry. I know. I know. Trust me. I've got, oh, I have a brand new needle. For those of you who may just be joining us, this is just a regular 7511 embroidery needle. Um, and I have just my regular embroidery thread, 40 weight embroidery thread. Um, and I've got my basswood laid in there. So here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Now it's going to be a little louder than you would expect. It's going to be a little louder because it's going through wood, but look at that. Oh my gosh. I should have used a darker thread, so that's all right. I, I, but as you I, can I, see. <laughs> oh, what do you my think? Goodness. Isn't that amazing? Is that not amazing? It's again, it's just a soft wood. That's all it is. So it goes through without any problems. And as long as you slow your speed down and reduce your tension, you'll be just fine. But like I said, I, I'll be honest with you. The first time you do this, your brain is going to be like, what are you doing? This is going to end in disaster. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah, my it's gosh. Fine. It's fine. Would... And, and we'll just keep going here. It's a little bit louder because it's going through wood. Um, but again, it just happily stitches right along. I haven't had any stitch breakage, no thread breakage, nothing. I'm absolutely floored. So are all the brother fans. And yeah. I, I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm absolutely in shock. I, I absolutely love this. I'm going to have to try it. And I think everyone on here is going, I cannot like to see this. Yep. We've heard about it. And we're like, yep. yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And that's exactly why one of the reasons why I did it is, you know, you've probably heard, like I said at the beginning, you've probably heard a lot of us educators talk about embroidery. You can embroider on wood, but you may not have seen it. That's not something that we usually show in an event um, unless a dealer specifically asked for that. But I wanted to show that today because it's something so bizarre and out of the box and like I said, your brain is like, oh gosh, I'm going to be running to my dealer because my machine somehow busted. It won't. Trust me, folks. It works just fine as wow. long as you slow your machine down and reduce your tension. This is just a regular embroidery needle with regular embroidery thread. There's nothing fancy about it. And yes, you can. It. Yes, your dream machine too. Absolutely, you can do this. Yep, I'm I've done it on mine that, as well. Because he, Jerry's been doing this for a long time, way before the Luminaire came out. So, mm -hmm. uh, other if as long as you have an embroidery machine. I, yeah. I've just, this is the coolest thing ever. My imagination is going a million miles an hour. I would love to know in your comments what you're thinking as well. What would you use this for? I could think of gifts. Yeah. I mean, whoa. Okay, Jerry, you can't. Stop. Remember, I said, remember I said it <laughs> when I first started is I stained the wood uh, and I did, I made sure it was dry, of course. And oh, yeah, so the thickness is 330 this. seconds. 330 seconds. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Rosie, is the wood. You can stain it. Absolutely. So I stained it um, and then uh, used it as the top of a jewelry box. So again, it's you can apply it to something else. And the beauty of this as well is you can cut this out with the scissors. So that's my next point. So I'm just going to cut my thread here. This is so cool. And you can see it acts like fabric. It's not anything. It's just a little bit louder and you're going a little slower because, of course, it's going through wood. So it's going to be a little bit louder. So I'm going to pull this off. And no, then I'm going to show you um, Sue exactly. Sue do this oh. on any embroidery machine, by the way, Sue, not just the Luminaire. He's using the Luminaire, yeah. but any embroidery machine. Yep. And I said that at the beginning, too. You can use any machine that you want to. So now what I did is I laid. Um, so how do I get my shape? So all I did, let's go back to our tennis racket here. Okay. And all I did is I took a piece of tracing paper, again, just very old school, um, and I taped it, you know, I, I double taped it so that the, the tracing paper stuck to the racket and just took a pencil and just very lightly traced around to give me my design. And that's what I have here. <laughs> just, just a little design of tracing paper that gave me the dimensions of my tennis racket. So then we get to move this out of the way and get my other piece of wood. So once my design was finished, here, let me use the finished one. That might work a little better. I'm just going to show them this real quick just so they yeah. can kind of get another idea. This is what the outline. So yeah, he yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. And that, okay. again, that was cut with scissors. I didn't wow. use anything, any fancy cutting. So once it's done, I just overlaid my pattern onto the wood and then taped it in the four corners and then cut it with scissors. This will cut with scissors absolutely perfectly. Um, you could use a rotary cutter if you're going to use straight lines. I probably wouldn't use it with the with the curves, but
But you can, again, just a regular scissors, use your utility scissors. Don't use your good, fine garment scissors because you'll be unhappy because <laughs> you're cutting wood. And once you've done that, now you're going to place it in your tennis racket. You're going to glue it. You can glue it right to the strings as I did. And then on the back, just you can see the strings exposed. Um, I just added a piece of felt to make it all nice and pretty. And that's all it was. And then you don't even have to cut that accurately because I used a metallic like decorative rope and hot glued that right in there. And that covered any gaps that I might have. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's very forgiving, uh, this project. So there it is, folks. You can embroider on wood. Unbelievable. Yep. Unbelievable. And I'll just set that up here just for a little sample, a little example. And there it is. And this was my test piece. Now I can use this for something as well. Gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, so I was not expecting this at all. <laughs> and you know, another thing, another thing you could, everybody's shocked. They're like, this is the coolest yeah. thing ever. Another thing you could do is you could use uh, like dyes. You could use like fabric dyes, like the um, uh, fiber reactive dyes. And you could stain your wood with that because this is a polyester uh, thread. It's not going to absorb the dye. So you could dye like right over this. You could put some dyes on here. It's not going to absorb because it's poly. It's not a natural thread. So it's wow. not going to absorb the dye. Very cool. I see some people asking questions that we've already answered. So if you came in late, you are going to want to save this show. If you're on Facebook, share it to your page. You can go back and watch from the beginning. He gave a lot more information and showed you about the ribbons. And if you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. You'll never miss a show, but you can also go back and watch from the beginning. So I'm not going to keep repeating some of the questions that were asked, but many of these were already. <laughs> and actually, and Jerry even plays tennis on top of it. I do. Yep, I do. I'm a tennis player. So yeah, this would be a great decorative. All I did was spray paint, just use some cheap spray paint, spray painted the, the tennis racket. It took about two coats um, and you're, you're, you can now just go crazy and decorate it however you want. So there's the before. And there is the after. Unbelievable. Yeah. I love it. So, Jerry, I have to tell you, I love to play tennis as well. Uh, and I, uh, many, many years ago, Wynn and I were, I think we were in Key West, actually. So, Melody, if you're on here, you'll get a really good laugh. Right on the corner of US 1 and the main road going into Key West. Well, you've yep. been in the Keys. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Many times. Yep. I know exactly where you're talking. So I don't remember what hotel, if it was a Holiday Inn that had a tennis court that we could all play at. So I'm going to give you the laugh for the day. I said, when I just want to get some exercise. Let's go play tennis. He's like, okay. So we went on a day that it was gusting about maybe 40 mile an hour winds. And we're not very good, by the way. <laughs> well, if you are one of the lucky cars on US1, depending on which side of the court you're on, I was hitting the cars going into Key West and Wynn was hitting the cars on US1. <laughs> we went through three cans of balls over the fence. And I did get a lot of exercise because I spent the whole day chasing balls. So I gave up that tennis career at that moment. I decided I'd stick to fishing. <laughs> wow. Well, the brighter side of that is it's a good thing they weren't baseballs that you were throwing <laughs> over the fence. <laughs> Absolutely. You have, yeah. There's no lawsuits there. No lawsuits with tennis balls usually. No lawsuits. <laughs> So do any of you have more questions for Jerry before I let you go? Because this show was fantastic. I mean, I was on my toes the whole time. Jerry's the man. Yes, yeah. Definitely. What do you think? What do you think? I mean, this is this is amazing. Yes, you really? can embroider on wood. You certainly can. Outstanding. Kelly says impressive. Um, can you do this on a 10 needle? Have you done this on a 10 needle? Everyone yes, absolutely. So sure. I've, I've done it on mine. I've got a 10 needle. I've done it on mine. Yeah. <laughs> Scary, but tempting. Yes. Yeah, it's, it, this is, so someone asked, where do you, I mean, I know we can't name brands here because we're a brother's show, but uh, where would you go just to a, like a hardware store to find wood like this? Or do you go yeah, to a craft a, store? Craft store. They have them online. I've seen it online. You could buy them online. Craft stores usually carry them in a pack of, I think my, I got mine in a pack of 10. Um, my little coaster size that I showed that came also in like a pack of 10. So yeah, just check with your craft store, check with your, um, check with your online Realtor and or realtor <laughs> online retailer. Yeah, if you're buying a house, you know, that's made of wood too. So, um, yeah, so you can embroider your house basically. Oh, Elizabeth stole the words right out of my so stinking cute, but she yeah. says so stinking cool. I agree. Yeah, awesome. Everybody's saying thank you. Yeah, so this was this was a fun project to put together, it was a lot of fun. I could see this being a great graduation gift coming up. 
um, Father's Day. I always yeah. try to think of something cool for my dad. This would be very cool. Yeah. If you have tennis players, I mean, this is really great. Again, like you have someone who's going to college and they need to decorate their dorm room and they're, they're going to be on the tennis team. This would be a great, a great gift for them. Oh, I don't know about that one, Lorraine. Uh, yes, you can cut basswood on the scan and cut. You, yes, can? you can? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's as long as it's three millimeters or less. And it's basswood and balsa wood are great because they're soft woods. So I have a friend who does inlaid woodwork and he cuts all of his wood veneer on a scan and cut. So yeah, as long as it's three millimeters, which I believe three thirty seconds is shorter than three millimeters, um, you can do it. Yep. Everybody's mind was going the same place. Where? Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what about, uh, so here's one. Uh, Bellcat says, since you think outside of the box, have you ever tried to embroider on painting canvas? Uh, yes, you can. That's yeah. that's just like a regular canvas. Sure, absolutely. Yep, you sure can. Let's see. That's I just a heavier be... fabric. I mean, I embroider on upholstery fabric, which is really thick, and it has that rubbery backing. That'll work. Again, just kind of slow things down a little bit. Try not to try not to um, embroider too fast. <laughs> Let your machine give your machine a chance. <laughs> Awesome. Hey, Candy, have fun in the keys. I'm a little jealous about that. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, don't worry. I'm not, I gave up the tennis game, so you're good. Some, <laughs> Rosie said, good thing it wasn't golf balls. I agree. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Jerry, this was an awesome show. Now, I am really bummed because Tuesday I have to come after you, and mine is nothing outside the box like this. <laughs> this is not a competition. This is not oh, a competition. Oh, no. I it's might about have creativity. to. Oh, gosh. This is going to be. Tricky. I'm doing something for garments. That's fine. I mean, that's awesome. It's not but a competition. This, this is the most fantastic thing I've ever seen. I don't even know if that was proper English, but <laughs> we're just going to go. With it. <laughs> well, you know, we talk about doing it, and I said I'm going to show them that they can do it. So, this and it's is it's awesome. fine. Slow your machine down. Regular needle, regular embroidery thread. Nothing fancy. Use your sticky wow. back so it doesn't move around, and off you go. And really, once there's a couple stitches in it, you've kind of already secured it anyway. So. <laughs> Hey, Joanna has a good question for you. And by the way, some of the designs that he was mentioning earlier came off of embroidery. Some of these were, you can just look on your, your own embroidery machine too. How, did, okay, Joanna, that's a great question. So where did this even come from? And how did you even think of this? Well, I've been working with manufacturers for years and brother for years. And, you know, you always hear about this thing, people embroidering on wood. Well, how, it's been around for a long time. So I did a lot of research and found products that work really well for me, that work just about every time. I mean, occasionally you get a piece of wood that has a knot in it. You don't want to use that. Um, you have a wood that may split on you depending on the manufacturer. Just grab another piece and you'll be fine. But, you know, little things like that. But I, it's worked 99% .9 of the time. And I just, I decided to try it. And many, many years ago, I just said, you know, I'm going to give this a shot. And it was, it worked out great. And I've been doing it ever since. So awesome. Amazing. It is amazing. Karina. I agree. Karina, you can add this to your repertoire. <laughs> she loves Again, do a test to make sure that your machine can handle it. Um, and, uh, you know, brother makes very powerful machines, but again, you know, all machines have their little quirks. So just make, do a little test by a little piece first and, and give it a shot and see if it works. And if it does, you can expand from there. Awesome. Awesome. So by the way, here's a little glimpse of what's coming up next Thursday. And this is Tina's. Ooh. She actually took the block and then embroidered on it, add some scan and cut, add quilt sashing, another total different view. This is quilt, this quilt challenge is so much fun. Quilt to fashion. And I think tennis is totally fashion. Anything <laughs> like that. That's awesome. Jerry. Fashionable. Fashionable. Thank you so much. Happy St. Patty's Day. Where's your, uh, you better put your get up. I know. Up. It's down here. I don't want to lean over and grab it. <laughs> and look like I'm passing out. <laughs> <laughs> this was awesome. If you're watching the replay and you have any questions for, for Jerry, or if you have questions about this project, go ahead, leave them in the comments and um, we'll get back to you. Yeah. Jerry, have a wonderful day. Cannot wait to see you again. You too. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Go out and have your corned beef and cabbage and, and, and load up on that. I know I'm going to, but thank you, Angela, for having me on the show. I, I hope you are all inspired. I hope you give this a try. Um, oh, yes. It's so much fun, and it's just going to open up a whole other world of creativity for you. 
And I'm going to ask you again, be sure to give Jerry the love in the comments on your Facebook, because I think Thank this you. is the coolest thing I ever have. And I always read those at night and I get a good chuckle out of them. <laughs> this today okay. is going to be like, I could, if I could have a picture of all the brother fans, all a couple thousand of you, just, I, if we could have that photo, it'd be like a zoom where everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how is he doing that? <laughs> He's gonna hit start. Everyone's like, oh my this God. This is not going to go well. <laughs> Nope, but it's said high five to you and high five to the brother machines. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This is this is so much fun. I love this. All right. Well, let's come up with the challenge for next month. We'll yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good all idea. Right. Have a monthly challenge. That'd be cool. I think it's fantastic. And then, yeah, by the cool. way, all of you that are sewing, I forgot to mention this. If you look above, use hashtag brother sews, hashtag brother scan and cut. If you're using this quilt of fashion challenge, we'd love to see what you're working on. And especially if you do this wood, I, I'd love to see it and more ideas for it. And you can okay. make all your friends jealous because you're going to do this now because you watch the show and you knew how you know how to do it. And they're going to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> you're <gonna> make <laughs> them all jealous. <laughs> it's going to be the party where everybody comes over and like, oh my goodness, you better serve a drink first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's going to be like, we're going to, we're going to what? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right, Jerry. Where, by the way, uh, any new shows you're coming up to in case somebody wants to stop by and say hi to you? Yeah. Um, next week, if you're going to be in Branson, I'm doing the AQS show in Branson. I'll be in the, uh, I believe um, one of our dealers is handling that. So just kind of look through the vendor list and uh, they'll, they, there is a brother listing there. Uh, so if you're in Branson, come on by the booth, say hi. I'd love to, I'd love to talk to you. That's awesome. Hey, by the way, um, Gwen just had one last question. I embroidery. Uh, did you get all of your stitches in embroidery or just the first? Yeah, the, the the tennis and the two minis are from my embroidery. Hey, that's awesome. So even if you don't have a Disney machine, you can use embroidery. It has to be a brother machine, though, that you this has to go into. It does not work yeah. on other machines. So well, and I'm just I'm just gonna say this quickly. If you come to Branson, I will bring the tennis racket so you can see all it live. Right. And you can get a picture with it and then do hashtag brother sews. Oh, I think that I'm going to watch for that. I'm yeah. going to watch for that. I think that would be fantastic. I'll bring the racket. So come and see me. That sounds good. Well, have a good time. I'm sorry. I'll miss you, but I'm going to look for the photos now. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see it. Come on, folks. Come and see me. Got the racket. I'll, I'll polish up on my We'll We'll part. make a racket. <laughs> in grand Bye, Jerry. Happy St. Patty's Day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm afraid I have a confession to make. I'm actually here undercover. <gasps> March, now. <gasps> I came to Quilt Club to gain the knowledge and insight to help build the best collection of quilting machines brothers made. <gasps> I'm sorry I couldn't tell you I was undercover. Can you find it in your hearts to forgive me? Let's quilt. <laughs>